Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Jane Thornton and I am a clinician scientist and sport and exercise medicine physician based out of London, Ontario, Canada. And I'm honored to be here today to present the Canadian model on physical activity prescription. I wanna start by talking about the scope of the problem in Canada right now. And I know this is a problem I share, we share with other countries around the world, but 94% of our Canadian children and youth and 85% of Canadian adults do not currently meet national physical activity guidelines. And we see this becoming a problem that's getting worse as our population starts to age uh, and get older and account for more healthcare costs. And it's something that uh, we have the same guidelines as many of you do uh, that are listening to this presentation. Uh, in the US, we have uh, essentially the same guidelines that we look for about 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity per week, plus two sessions of resistance training and some balance training for our older adults that are 65 years and up. But essentially, we see this as a major problem in our kids as well, who should be meeting uh, guidelines of about an hour of physical activity uh, per day. And we're just not cutting it. So we have a major problem in medicine, as we're all aware, from the perspective of the challenge of talking about physical activity to the patients that come to us whether or not it's for a personalized risk assessment or annual review or for treatment or prevention of chronic conditions. And one of the main issues, of course, is lack of time, but there's also the aspect of lack of knowledge or training on physical activity, and even the lack of belief that patients are going to engage or to actually listen to our advice. So it doesn't motivate us to speak to our patients at, for any length of time. And of course, that's an issue of remuneration, which I think we don't necessarily talk about as much. Uh, we do always want to feel that we're motivated to give the best treatment to the patient uh, in front of us. But unfortunately, with the time pressures and so on, it's really difficult to talk about physical activity when it's something that's not necessarily reimbursed um, by our current healthcare system. And one of the other issues that's come up in even within Canada itself is this concept of the people whose lives uh, are on the margins, the marginalized patient populations that we don't often talk about or think when we provide fitness advice. And there was an interesting article that came out in our Canadian Medical Association journal a year ago or now or so that really talked to this, this problem of, of our patients, such as a, the single mother who has kids at home that's working two jobs, who missed the bus to get home on time, who's struggling to balance all sorts of things like kids' homework, chores, uh, errands and so on. And then her doctor says, try to find 20 more minutes of a day to exercise. It just isn't realistic. And we often think about people who have another um, concept of, of barriers to access or that can't afford to access gyms or who may, it may not really resonate for them from a cultural standpoint to include the physical activity guidelines. So it's really something that we in Canada are starting to be more aware of that it's not just about uh, providing this golden number, but also to explore context and make something culturally relevant for our patients. And I really think this speaks to our opportunity as sport and exercise medicine physicians to change the narrative in medicine and to think about things like the cost effectiveness. We know it's cost effective to prescribe physical activity. We know that it's effective as well. And even if 25% uh, of our Canadian physicians are actually prescribing physical activity, 92% of patients actually want to hear about it. And so there is that dis disconnect, but it also presents an opportunity for us to, to make a difference and make a tan tangible change. And so I wanted to just briefly touch on some of the key advances that we've had over in Canada over the past several years now. And uh, these, the, the type is small here. I'm happy to provide a list of resources of papers and of publications and of op-eds and things like that, that we've really tried to advance over the last several years to really make a tangible difference um, going forward on the Canadian scene. But really uh, the big push started in 2014 when we introduced the curriculum at University of Toronto. And uh, that even though it wasn't necessarily the first to introduce physical activity on the curriculum, we have about 17 different medical schools in Canada and each had some kind of theme, but this really represented one of the first times that physicians were actively involved in the the education of future medical students on physical activity prescription. And even though it wasn't in existence before 2014, to their credit, University of Toronto really revamped the curriculum. And now it's uh, in all of our years of medicine uh, in medical training. 
In 2015, uh, some of you may be familiar with Dr. Mike Evans. He uh, produced a series of whiteboard videos and one of the most famous ones of them was called 23 and a half hours, essentially talking about different healthcare aspects. And the 23 and a half hours of really talking about physical activity and your health and a good nine minute video for people to show in their waiting rooms and so on. And it went viral and this concept of really um, trying to talk about physical activity to our patients in a casual way, but in a way that's inviting. And uh, was also part of this uh, spearheading of this concept of peer-to-peer -peer healthcare. So Dr. Evans and I uh, produced a website uh, along with some patient advocates and design creatives on, uh, on basically helping patients get over and the general public get over barriers to physical activity. And that also prompted a kind of a movement for movement, so to speak, that generated a lot of buzz around the world. And the following year, there a number of things really started to ramp up in 2016. One of the things that happened on our end is that and a Senate report on obesity came out. And one of the recommendations was that physical activity prescription be adopted by physicians and other healthcare providers. The National Senior Strategy also came out by the Canadian Medical Association. And we were able to put in something there in terms of talking about the importance of physical activity for our older adults. 2016 also saw the development of a consensus statement some of you may be familiar with on physical activity prescription that was jointly published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine and the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine. And a real highlight for me uh, certainly was uh, the adoption, the creation and adoption of a motion that we presented to the Canadian Medical Association to prioritize for the first time physical activity in the undergraduate medical education. And so that was advanced and passed and a great success for physical activity nationwide and really prompted this uh, national strategy on medical education that was really started informally several years earlier, but really gained traction that year uh, at that specific conference. So it led to things like the following year, a, a workshop at our Canadian Conference on Medical Education on looking at the strengths and weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and so on that we had to build this national strategy because in Canada, at least, we don't really have a precedent for that, that most medical schools tend to teach on their own uh, subjects. And in 2018, we also had a, um, a, a movement or a launch of uh, some patient education resources uh, and we call this My Active Ingredient, and it's something that we're de developing a website for as well. And in 2019 was the first, uh, the advent of our, our Medicine Through Movement conferences that I'll just chat with you as well about as well shortly. And lastly, getting involved with our partners, AMSSM, uh, last year in terms of thinking about what can we do now to further objectives and develop competencies for physical activity prescription at all levels of medicine. And here's our uh, prescription, uh, physical activity prescription consensus statement that came out in 2016. It was adopted by 10 sport and exercise medicine uh, communities and societies, I should say, around the world, which really helped with dissemination, getting the word out. Recently, we came out with an infographic, and it just goes through the five stages of how to uh, prescribe physical activity, a little bit of a how-to for sport and exercise and primary care physicians. And one of the things, uh, Medicine Through Movement Conference that we started a couple of years back, we have our second series in April this year, and uh, really looking at this concept of having different specialists all around Canada, it doesn't need to be in sports medicine at all, but just talking, sharing evidence-based resources and their way of talking about physical activity prescription to their patients. So it's really a unique way of understanding through other medical disciplines, how they incorporate these conversations and into their prevention and treatment plans. Uh, one thing our team is working on is looking at clinical trials and developing a set of understanding clinical uh, outcomes, but also patient reported outcome measures when we prescribe physical activity. So following patients and seeing how it works on a number of different levels, but also involving patients in the co-design of our interventions on the clinical and the study level, but also in our patient education resources. And this is what really prompted my active ingredient to come along and develop resources, um, try to try to facilitate access, especially uh, given the various different chronic conditions that patients may have, involve them in, in our designs. And I just wanna come back lastly to talk about a piece on advocacy. 
when we think about remuneration, even when we think about smoking, uh, it's of course, it's hugely important to be counseling on smoking cessation. And we all know the reasons why for that. When we look at the things like number needed to treat. So I often come back to this graph that really to get one smoking patient to give up cigarettes, we need to advise about 50 to 120 patients. But to get one inactive patient to meet recommended activity levels, we need to advise 12. So both have comparable benefits. We are able to bill for smoking cessation counseling and treatment in Canada and Ontario, uh, not so much for physical activity yet, although it's starting to change and some provinces do allow for it in very select circumstances. So it's really an advocacy piece for us as well to talk about the importance of adding those uh, abilities to, to uh, counsel on physical activity and make it meaningful and a meaningful part of a clinical encounter or even a clin clinical encounter on its own. So the next steps are looking forward to national edu uh, medical education strategy. We're continuing to meet with our stakeholders around the country on that. We're updating our fellowship curriculum to in involve some of these new resources and include our learnings on this. The Medicine Through Movement Conference is gaining a lot of attention and traction, even from our, um, our, our presidents of our medical associations to uh, health columnists and so on. So it's been really exciting to see that come through. And My Active Ingredients is launching, we're launching our website, but also looking at developing more patient-centered resources. And, and as I mentioned, the really the advocacy, but especially on our unique role in sport and exercise medicine, of course, um, involving our allied health and other professionals in this conversation as well, but not backing away from the importance that we really have uh, in terms of trying to prescribe physical activity. So I'll stop there and I wanna thank you for your time and attention. And I hope that uh, everyone's enjoying learning from the different experiences that we all have. If you'd like to contact me, please feel free to email me or check out any of the Twitter, Twitter accounts or various websites. And I really invite everyone to uh, check out the Medicine Through Movement resources at CASM. We have an online page of just free resources that we're curating on physical activity prescription, physical activity for health and so on. And also looking uh, ahead at different uh, webinars and, uh, and educational modules uh, on those topics as well. So thank you uh, very much for your time and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of uh, today. Thank you.